We've been comparing self-publishing companies for the past few weeks, looking at apples to oranges comparisons. Obviously, all companies aren't created the same, and some of them aren't quite as equal as others, but it's where we're coming up to today. These two companies don't give enough acknowledgement. Like a lot of people don't acknowledge these. We are always talking about places like KDP and Ingram Spark and Draft the Digital, all these things. But why haven't we talked about Blurb and Lulu? I mean, both share a lot in common, but they each have some distinct features and options and some slightly weird payout structures. And we're going to talk about that in today's podcast. So make sure that you stay tuned. <laughs> What's happening, everybody? I am just tickled to death. You took a little bit of time out your day to spend a little bit of time with me, talk about my favorite thing in self-publishing. Today's broadcast, it comes with an exclusive offering. If you are a fantasy author, folks, we are actively putting together something with Reign of Reads, with Author Platform Rocket, with Crave Books, and of course, my show, Book Rescue, in one of the largest mega fantasy giveaways. If you're a fantasy author looking to massively expand your reach and reach upwards of nearly a quarter of a million active fantasy readers, then you're going to want to make sure that you join this. More details about the mega fantasy giveaway when you visit dalelinks.com slash fantasy giveaway. Again, that's dalelinks.com slash fantasy giveaway. I'll leave a link inside the show notes. Why are we talking about Blurb and Lulu today? Well, we've kind of burned through a lot of the other companies, and I wanted to make sure we still address these ones, because in my opinion, both Blurb and Lulu have a lot to offer, and their print quality is second to none. Are they a little bit more pricey than some other avenues? Yes, but you get what you pay for in most instances. Now, if you disagree with me and you say Blurb and Lulu is not the greatest quality, then you're probably the minority because I think the massive amount of people can all agree that the print quality is fantastic. Both companies distribute ebook and print book. There's no audiobooks in the mix. We don't need to worry about kind of muddying up those waters. And last I spoke with Chelsea Bennett over at Lulu, she said audiobooks were, were not even on their radar. They weren't even planning on distributing something like that. Interestingly, though, the independent alliance or the Alliance of Independent Authors, otherwise known as Ally, I've, I've trumpeted about them so much before ad nauseum, um, fantastic nonprofit organization that's run by indie authors for indie authors. And they're typically looking out for your well-being and your your best interests. And they have something that's called the watchdog list to where they go through and they vet specific companies based on a specific criteria to see that they're meeting those things. And um, in their watchdog list, which, by the way, you can get that dalelinks.com slash watchdog or just look up the Alliance of Independent Authors watchdog list and you'll go and get the list and you can search it down to Blurb and you'll find that Blurb actually has a recommended rating. It's not excellent, but there's really only differentiation between excellent and and recommended is excellent is typically someone who is a partner with Ally. So Blurb is currently not a partner, which I thought they were at one point, but maybe they aren't anymore. Uh, so recommended means great. They're on poor. They're on par for course. That's easy for me to say. But Lulu is where it kind of gets a little shaky. Uh, Lulu gets what's called a mixed rating. Now it's not a caution. And it's not a warning either. That's like the worst, like red and orange label on this. There's, there's just a little bit like, they're like, ah, there's some, some shaky stuff going on here. And there's concerns, and I'm going to use quotes on this one, concerns over value and service. All that in spite of their best efforts? Because believe it or not, Lulu has a little bit of a shaky past. Not that they were scammers. Some people would probably disagree with me on this one. They were trying their best, but weren't quite delivering what authors would expect from them. But they've course corrected over the years that I've come to know them. And even last, oh gosh, let's see here at the beginning of the pandemic, I actually was literally in the middle of it, like I think March or April of 2020, that Lulu decided they were going to migrate to a new platform that had better features. And I got to see early access of it. I got to beta test it and everything. I, I loved it, but their audience was not ready for that because Lulu's been around for a long time. 
So the authors that have been on it have been around for a long time and they got used to some of the features and how the dashboard worked. So in this upgrade, what ended up happening was a full on upheaval because things started breaking and it got absolutely ugly. I probably should do an entire podcast about it. It's super fascinating. And to me, I feel like they did the best they could to redeem themselves because there were some accounts that were being migrated over and people's sales data got lost or they lost a cover or they lost the manuscript or the metadata was all jumbled up. There was just a lot. It was just absolutely crazy. And they've really done their best. Like again, get back in good graces. Um, I don't think they intended to break their model that wasn't, they weren't like, you know what, let's waste tens of thousands of dollars by messing things up. No, they really wanted to improve things and make it better. And unfortunately, it it broke. And my heart went out to them when that happened. I'm like, ooh, it got ugly. You went and looked at their social media profiles. You went into some of my YouTube comments. People did not have anything nice to say about Lulu. And I can see why some people were angry, but again, that's already been nearly two years since that happened, and they're doing pretty darn good. Let's discuss all of their features and all the things, and we're going to try to measure them. Ebooks. Let's start out with Blurb. Blurb is interesting in how their ebook distribution goes. In order to actually use ebook or publish ebooks through Blurb, you have to convert through their system. Now, normally you just show up with an EPUB file. You're ready to rock and roll. Let's go ahead and do this. Not there. They want to have that control. So it's about $9.99, $9.99, I should clarify, like just short of 10 bucks for EPUB 3 conversion. Now, this is reflowable text, meaning that if somebody reads it from one device to the next, it's going to have some deviation. People can change the size of the font, make it uh, smaller, bigger, things like that. So reflowable text is nice. It's great. People like to have that. Um, if you want to have a fixed layout, which means that everything is static, it stays the way it is, and all you can do is zoom in it on an e-reader, then they have a PDF conversion, and that's $4.99. I'm going to get to the royalties and how the ebooks work with Blur because it's pretty interesting. You have that small paywall, the $4.99 or $9.99. Beyond that, though, I'll get to that in just a second. Now, let's go over to Lulu. Lulu takes EPUB and PDF. That's it. There's no conversion fees. We don't need to fiddle around with worrying about that type of stuff. And if you want to know how to format an EPUB or PDF, I'm sure Lulu probably has an entire tutorial that will walk you through it. Like they have something for everyone. They even have templates. For instance, if you wanted to go ahead and write your ebook, they might have an ebook template you can use or a print book template that you can use. So love how Lulu kind of does things. They keep things less complicated, but... It's going to get a little dicey, though, once we get over into royalties and the royalty structure for ebooks. So let's go ahead and look at print. So with Blurb and Lulu, they both take PDFs. Simple. Just make it super easy. They might accept other files, but just make it PDF. It's just universally used. Blurb, though, is the one that gets you scratching your head. It's different formatting specs than any other platforms. They're like the black sheep of self-publishing because if you know this, you know this. When you publish through Amazon KDP print or even through Lulu, on the back cover, your barcode will be placed. Either you do it with your designer or it's automated through their systems. And it will be in the bottom right-hand corner of the back cover. That's where it usually goes. Not on Blurb. It goes in the middle so if you've got KDP print files, it's not a simple case of let me just take these files from KDP and I'll load them up to Blurb and we're good to go, all set. No. And I sat down and I looked at their interior formatting specs and I looked at their cover design specs. It's just so much different. So be prepared that if you plan to utilize Blurb by taking the same content that you're using through other platforms, repurposing it and putting it to Blurb, 
you're in for a little bit of a headache. But the cool thing is they have some automated software that does its best to format it in a way that looks good. I ordered a few proofs and outside of the weird barcode placement, the interior looked fine. Nothing was out of order. It was great quality. Loved it, actually. Really. Now, Lulu, they have standard specs. So if you end up doing a file over on KDP, you can easily just take that file and go to Lulu and do the same thing. So the barcode issues, not a problem. It's not an issue. Blurb, it does become an issue. So just be prepared ahead of time. If you're hiring a cover designer and you're wanting to publish through other avenues and Blurb, you're gonna to need to pay a little extra money to get that cover design done properly for Blurb. Alrighty. Now, when it comes to print, though, this is honestly, I sat down, I started counting things and I just gave up. I'll, I'll be straight up honest with you guys. Usually I just I count how many I'm like, no, I, I give up. Blurb and Lulu have the most print options out there, to my knowledge. It is so robust in things such as paperbacks, hardcovers, hardcovers with dust jackets. Now, here's the key. Even if you don't want to do books you can use their other products they have available. This includes calendars, photo books, spiral bound notebooks. There's so much on each one of these platforms. It's absolutely dizzying. In fact, their photo book option over on Blurb is probably the best you're gonna find. High quality paper, high quality print. We're talking premium. So this is not like some photo book you're gonna go get made for like $5 and sell for 10. We're talking, you're probably gonna have to charge a huge premium. That's one of the biggest issues when it comes to printing through Blurb or Lulu. Print fees are pretty high. In fact, a bit higher than any of the other companies. But again, comes down to quality though. To me, I think that they, they both provide great quality. All right, we talked about all those options. Show me the money. Let's talk about royalties. This one was rather frustrating. I actually had to go through the previous podcast that I did. Oh gosh, let's see here. Somewhere in 2021, maybe 2020, where I talked more about Blurb. I didn't see anywhere in my notes. So I'm like, okay, great. I'm gonna go ahead and do my due diligence. I'll search up, boom, boom, boom. Keep searching, keep searching, keep searching. Couldn't find the answer. So with royalties, Blurb says out the, bay, out, out the gate, it's going to be 100% net profits after the conversion fee. So remember there was a conversion fee for eBooks over on Blurb? So you pay that $4.99 or the $9.99, which I'd recommend EPUB3 if you can help it. Um, once you pay that, it's it. it's all profits. But they're an aggregate publisher, meaning that they're publishing out to other platforms on your behalf. And though you might think you're gonna get 100% of say $9.99 on your eBook, you're not gonna get that. Based on whatever the agreement they have put in place with the particular platform will be the percentage that you will get. So for instance, if it were to publish through Amazon KDP, you'll get 70%. Not bad, right? Um, it's where the print books come in. Big question mark. Like, I know they've got super steep print fees. That's gonna be the biggest thing. And they charge more for the books in general by having this steep printing fee. But it's never a clear answer because of all of the different print types of books, it's going to widely vary. And I just couldn't find any specific article with them saying, okay, this, this, and this. I had to go into my actual account, figure out, I'm like, well, how does this apply? What if, what if it's on photo books or calendars? How, how does this work? I'm just completely lost. So anybody that's watching this from Blurb would love to actually have a straightforward answer from you. Lulu. Now, I'm going to have a couple people cough when I tell you this one. Please stay with me on it. For ebooks, they say 90% of net profits. 90% of net profits. Now remember, Lulu's an aggregate publishing company, meaning they publish out on your behalf to other places. So technically, the only place you're going to actually get 90% on is if you sell your ebook by way of Lulu's bookstore. That's it. Outside of that, you're going to get 90% of, say, 70% through KDP if you were to do that. So you get 
that's not really too bad, honestly. Now, it's the print one. It's a little bit sketchy. 80% of net profits minus print fees. Now, remember, it's pretty steep to publish a book through Lulu. Like Their print fees are definitely higher than the normal. This is where a lot of people like, no, 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 no. It's probably closer to like 35 to 55% royalty. It just varies based on what you're using as far as how many pages and the print quality and all those type of things. So distribution, where are they going to? Blurb has their own Blurb bookstore. Say that 10 times fast. They go to Apple bookstore, Google Play bookstore, Kobo, at Amazon, they also have website API integration, meaning that you could put together your own website commerce store on your website that would integrate with Blurb. Now, that, don't don't count out Lulu just yet because I'm going to get to them. Uh, and then generally speaking, remember I told you already they're an aggregate publisher. So even though they might distribute to Apple and Amazon your eBooks, you're going to get 70% of that. Remember, you still have to pay that fee. All right. And it's one-time fee, by the way. Lulu, Lulu has their own bookstore. They also have something called Lulu Express, which oddly enough integrates with Shopify. And they also have website API integration, kind of like what I was mentioning with Blurb. In fact, I don't know if Blurb came out with this feature till more recently because I didn't see it before, but it might have been because I wasn't looking for it. This time around, I saw, oh man, Blurb and Lulu share so much in common. It's uncanny. I'd be interested to see if either one of them would start to break out into more free models of e-commerce, such as WooCommerce, which is a plugin for WordPress. That would be fantastic if they did that. I wonder who would be first to that to get that specific feature because that will open up a treasure trove of authors that are wanting to sell by way of their websites. And also, I want to kind of make sure everybody understands that when you do website fulfillment, it's not like Amazon two-day shipping. This is like normal world type things. It'll take two weeks typically at a time for your book to ship. It does take a little longer. You don't get as much priority as say what you do distributing through Amazon. But if you're like me and you like to save money for the readers and make more money for yourself, then instances like this works out really nicely. Uh, anyway, Lulu does have distribu distribution to Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and also through Ingram content group and Ingram content group uh, works with Ingram spark and lightning source. Uh, they're also expanded distribution folks. So at any rate, uh, through KDP payouts, let's look at blurb blurb pays out 15 or 45 days after the close of the month. Now you're kind of, Oh my gosh, that's whoa. What, 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 ha what happened? Well, it depends on how you're getting paid out. If you're getting paid out by PayPal, it's 15 days. But if you're getting paid out by check, it's 45 days. Uh, the minimum payment threshold, it's it varies per region. But for the U.S., it's $25 is a minimum threshold before they will pay you. Um, check your region inside their FAQs. They probably have something there. Lulu is 45 days after the close of the quarter. So they pay out quarterly, meaning that... October, November, December is going to get paid probably on February the 15th. And this is their exact words. So just a heads up on that quarterly. They're one of very few self-publishing platforms that's still doing the quarterly model. I remember when Smashwords used to do it and they switched over to monthly and it's so much better. It's already tough enough waiting for that paycheck every 30 days. Can you imagine waiting for it an entire quarter? Ugh. So at any rate, they pay out by check with a $20 minimum threshold, and they pay out by uh, PayPal with a $5 minimum threshold. Each of those companies say, it, based on the type of account that you have through PayPal, there might be some fees involved. Um, and that's not their doing. That's PayPal, unfortunately. Now, customer service. This is the one I really wanted to hit on. Time and again, I hear from other authors that they're absolutely ecstatic with the customer service at Blurb. They say Blurb is just excellent. They really do take care of the authors over there. Lulu gets mixed. And I'm going to say mixed because there's a bit of bias on my behalf. The times that I needed help through Lulu, 
I didn't have to reach out to my go-to person, Chelsea Bennett there. No, I would reach to the company themselves because I want to be treated as an author like everybody else and find out what the experience is. And every time it was great. They were super helpful. I didn't really ever have to wait longer than a couple days to get any of those things. But I hear these nightmare stories and I can't sit here and just ignore the fact that people are trying to reach out to Lulu for specific issues, waiting for two weeks at a time, sometimes longer or even not even being reached back at all. That's not good. That's not a good look. And I think if Lulu is going to improve and do better and redeem themselves, one of the things I would say they need to do is invest more resources into their customer service. It seems kind of weird. It seems like, oh my gosh, we don't have enough funds to go towards that. Make it happen. Because the diehard people that left Lulu did it for a good reason. And I think if the customer service was probably better during that whole mishap, everything probably would have turned out so much differently. Hey folks, as we start to wrap up today's podcast, I want to of course give a really quick mention here about the mega fantasy giveaway. If you're a fantasy author, you want to join this particular giveaway. This is time sensitive. All right, folks, this is time sensitive. Uh, by March time, the giveaway is already going to be launched to readers and you're going to be out of luck. Go over to dailinks.com slash fantasy giveaway and become part of something's truly special and part of filming for book rescue. My final thoughts, folks, give Blurb and Lulu a shot. Give both of them a shot. You might surprise yourself. You might find, oh man, this is pretty cool. For ebook distri distribution, in my opinion, I probably just go right to the sources for each place. Maybe I'd use Lulu's store. Maybe I'd use Blurb store for ebook distribution. But to be honest with you, how much organic reach do they have? Is it going to be worth my time in publishing there? I would just rather go over directly to Barnes and Noble, go directly to Apple. So then I'm collecting all of that stuff and controlling the metadata that I'm doing there. So next episode, we're going to be talking about three different aggregate publishers. Smashwords, Publish Drive, and draft to digital. How do they look and compare it against each other? Well, we're going to be talking about in this uh, continuation of this series. To get advanced access to all podcasts, visit dalelinks.com slash YouTube podcast one week before the audio content publishes. That's right. We're actually live recording this on YouTube right now. And I want to give a big shout out to Jenny Rolls. She gave me a five-star review over on Apple and says, this is the first review I've ever written for a podcast. Thank you so much, Jenny. Dale, thank you for all your insightful wisdom. If I have a question, I know I can find a podcast by you on the topic. You are my go-to resource. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny Rolls. And those of you that haven't had the opportunity, please drop a comment over on YouTube or even drop a review over on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Audible, and beyond. iHeartRadio, I'm over there as well be so cool of you till next week folks this has been self-publishing with dale and i'll catch you then hey thanks so much for tuning in special shout out to my channel members for both the podcast channel and the main channel without your support some projects we do at self-publishing with dale would be much harder to fund if you want to contribute to the cause, visit dalelinks.com slash memberships for details and get your on-screen shout out at the end of each broadcast. Till later, this has been Self-Publishing with Dale, and I'll see you soon.